Gardena High School, a student between 16 and 18 years old, identified by police, they know his identity, holed up in this classroom after shooting uh, two students, a male and a female, possibly a third shooting victim. Uh, he was in this classroom with all of these students, and now this young man is getting on the ground, and this looks, this appears to be the suspect. When I went to Gardena High, it was an outstanding high school. You could graduate from Gardena High and go right directly into college. You pass any kind of an exam they want to give you to get into college. Well, my daughter uh, went to school in Gardena, and she, uh, at the time she went to Gardena High, was highly rated. But where we are today is a far different situation. I know there are a number of people who have moved out of the city so their kids could go to a better, better public school program. Um, by what I've heard, so this is more hearsay, it seems like. Um, uh, at the middle school and high school level, people are concerned with safety. I talked to Principal Gardena High School one time. He told me he was trying to stop this white flight, and then the Asian flight came next, and where people would still live in Gardena, but to try to send their kids to schools in Torrance, or down the beach, down the harbor area, and so on, to get away from having to send their kids to, to Gardena High School first, and then Perry Middle School. Why in the world would you want to send your kid? Why would you bring your family here to Gardena to put your kid through a school that is um, a hotbed for problems, you know? This is the second largest high school campus in all of Los Angeles Unified School District. We have about 34 acres here. This school is, you know, larger than some universities. Our public high school, Gardena, has come under fire for so many different reasons. Uh, a lot of... Um, uh, racial tension in the schools, plus we have a revolving door of administrators going through Gardena High School, which has really hurt. And from what I've heard, and I don't know uh, if, how true it is, but Gardena High has been the dumping grounds in the LA Unified, where you've got problem students, ship them to Gardena High School. Well, we have a magnet program here uh, that's very good. We have uh, students here learn Japanese, students, uh, our Spanish language programs are very good here. Our science programs are uh, fairly highly rated and uh, just overall. It doesn't do any good for a kid to go to school and not have the teacher not have control of the classroom. That's just a waste of time. So they had to come up with a solution for that. There are a lot of fights on the campus. Um, the police do what they can there, unfortunately. There's a lot of problems um, on that campus and other campuses as well in the public school system. Um, Gardena High School, as you know, um, is not actually located within the jurisdictional limits of Gardena, but we surround it. It's almost like an island. So as a result, what happens on that campus greatly affects our community. It's kind of really hard to get a handle on it when you're not in charge of it. But at the same time, if anything happens, you know, our resources from the city of Gardena have to come in, whether it's Gardena Police Department, whether it's public works, and, you know, right around the school and um, take care of the problem. So when it's not one of our schools and you really don't have say, but at the same time it pulls on city resources, you know, I think it's time to kind of rethink the idea of bringing it into Gardena. And I think that would be very good. Well, I don't think it would be a bad thing if the city of Gardena got to control its own school district. Uh, decentralizing. Uh, is, is never a bad thing, it's usually better than worse, and decentralizing also gives the people more local control over its, over its school district and over its community. That campus not, does not only contain students from the Gardena area, it contains students from the greater Los Angeles area that come in there, and, and sometimes when you have uh, different groups of kids moving into a campus, it spills over to some, you know, can be violent, sometimes, you know, kids don't get along, Things start on campus, they trickle out and they go off campus. You see other kids here? Yes. Yeah. 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 So far, it's uh, suspended or revoked. Well, kids getting out of school tend to go down and walk Gardena Boulevard down to Vermont and they terrorize the merchants from time to time. But, uh, you know, uh, we've gotten a lot better of having officers in that area just to kind of, you know, kid stuff. Uh, you know, keeping the kids from, you know, harassing the businesses too much. A few years ago, I had a friend of mine who taught at Gardena High School told me that. Washington High, the school just north of us, they got to freeze their enrollment the day school started. So the kids who came in late had to go to Gardena High. What kind of kids would come to school a week after school starts in September? Not the best kids. They'd go to Gardena High School and they turn out to be gang kids fighting with Gardena gang kids. Uh, when I was in high school, uh, the gangs weren't real big. 
and you know we we had heard we knew they were around, but it seemed like uh, everyone was in school that I went to school with they were pretty normal type of people. There weren't nearly as many guns in existence, and when I say in existence, so well distributed. I think we have more guns now than we have bicycles or something. You know, it's just like there's guns everywhere. It wasn't quite like that. And we didn't have a lot of gang activity on the campus. Within the city that I'm aware of, we don't have any racial tensions that I'm aware of. Now, if you direct your attention to the, within the schools, we've had issues within the school. Um, it's been the black on brown. Uh, we've actually had a black on black issue. Um, that's where you predominantly have a lot of the racial tensions. Um, and again, that's from my own personal experience on the school ground. Um, working with LA Unified School Police and LA Unified staff. We've, you know, there was an issue not too long ago at the school at Gardena where it was just, you could tell, you could sense the tension. Um, and it was, it was a racial issue. I know that uh, a year and a half ago, uh, there were a couple of little, uh, uh, I wouldn't say racial fights here and there, but uh, occasionally when uh, some guy is taking a girl from somebody else, uh, that person likes to turn it into a, a racial situation so that, if they can, so that uh, they can intimidate the person who, that they don't want to have there. But I found it to be very peaceful, both in the classroom and on the campus. I tell you something that there was a lot of tension with. Gardena High School versus other high schools when we went to go play football there. So if you went to go play football at an L.A.-oriented school, not so much Carson and Norabon and the other places that we played in our league, but every now and then we'd have games that took us into Los Angeles proper. And that was a little bit hairy. You know, if you were going to go support, I was on the football team. But if you were going to go support the football team and go to stands and go root for Gardena and all that, there was a little bit of a culture there that was starting to happen that made that a little dangerous. And I can, re I can remember that. I had, this, I had this guy that I met uh, when I was having the car of my son's towed away, and I told him I taught at Gardena High School. He said to me, I hate him. I hate him. I says, I'm sorry, sir. He was saying that he hate Gardena High School because he was about 44 years old and he went to Banning. And he says when he went to Banning, Gardena used to beat, beat them all the time. And he still hates Gardena High School because of how they would manhandle their football teams. So Gardena had a reputation as really being a powerhouse for many, many years. Okay, class, listen up. Okay. Uh, fortunately for you today, you had a day off. Yeah. Well, not really, but I trust that you learned something from uh, Pearl Harbor. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, you, you haven't gotten to the bombing scene yet? No. Today is the 6th, so tomorrow is the day that we'll live in, it live in infamy. I work here six days a week, and, uh, and, and I enjoy it. Uh, and even on Sunday sometime, I have a reason or a need to come back to my classroom or to come back to the school for something. Uh, but as I said, when I get here in the morning until I leave here, uh, I don't even have time to make social phone calls. You know? And even on my conference periods, I'm either covering for another teacher or doing some kind of work for the senior class.